Another month in the books, and as always, there's plenty to talk about. I'm Max, and this is your monthly RPG Fan News Reload for April of 2020. After an initial delay, the long-awaited Final Fantasy VII Remake finally saw release on April 10th, and in less than a month has already surpassed sales of 3.5 million. This is hardly a surprise, I mean, it was going to sell. I don't think anybody out there was worried that this was going to be the one to sink Square Enix. While the success is hardly a surprise, it's great to see how excited people were to play this game, and I can honestly say that Square Enix did not disappoint, giving the classic what can only be described as an extreme makeover while still delivering on major nostalgia. Final Fantasy VII wasn't the only classic to see a remake go live this April. While not as grand, the remake of Trials of Mana also saw release on PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch and PC. The sequel to The Secret of Mana was first released on the Super Famicom and took its sweet time to officially make it outside of Japan, but the wait was definitely worth it. Incidentally, Secret of Mana also received a remake in 2018, though to a somewhat mixed reception. All we need now is a remake of Secret of Evermore to cap off this unofficial remake trilogy. What's that I hear you scream? Max, you handsome beast, Evermore was never part of the Mana series? Okay, I know. But it was still a fun though somewhat flawed title that shed more than a handful of traits of the 16-bit Mana games. So as far as I'm concerned, it counts, okay? Good! Now, back to the news we get. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 4 is coming to North America this fall on the PlayStation 4 with a Switch and PC version to follow sometime in 2021. Originally released in Japan in September of 2018, the fourth and final installment caps off the Cold Steel series, which has garnered its fair share of praise over the years. But if you think the fat lady has sung and the curtain has fallen on The Legend of Heroes, think again because... A new game in The Legend of Heroes Saga releases in Japan on August 27th for the PlayStation 4. It has a title, but I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. I'm pretty sure it roughly translates to... The Legend of Heroes Max Can't Speak Japanese. But it's just a hunch. Players who have system data for the previous Trials games on their PS4 will also gain some bonuses. These will vary depending on which game data is present. It's currently unknown when the game will be localized for an international audience, but I'll take a wild guess and call it at two years. If you happen to be from the future, let me know if I was right in the comments below, or wherever YouTube keeps them these days. The Outer Worlds, an Obsidian Entertainment developed first-person RPG, is coming to Nintendo Switch and will launch with a Day One patch! Because everybody loves Day One patches! So start winding that crank on your 56k modem, because this bad boy can apparently reach up to 6 gigabytes. With goodies like higher resolution textures present on the list of offerings the patch brings to the table. The Outer Worlds is yet another great entry in the ever-impressive and constantly growing arsenal of Switch titles, so look out for this one on June 5th. Okay, I had to do a double take on this next one, and check if it wasn't actually an April Fool's joke, and despite being assured that it's very much a real thing, I'm still not 100% convinced but just can't help but include it anyway. If you ever said to yourself, boy oh boy, I like this protagonist, but what I really want is to play as a Pong paddle. Well, thanks to the minds behind Pong Quest, now you can. The quirky title will release sometime this spring on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch and PC, and let you explore the various dungeons based on iconic Atari properties like Asteroids and Centipede, as you take the role of, yes, a Pong paddle. At this point, I'm eagerly anticipating the announcement of the fantastic adventures of the Tetris L block. Now, you may have heard of the upcoming retro-inspired turn-based RPG Sea of Stars by creators of The Messenger, but what if I told you that legendary composer Yasunori Mitsuda, known for his outstanding work on titles such as Chrono Trigger and Xenogears, has signed on as a guest composer for the game, stating that, without knowing exactly why, he wants to write music for this game. Though he does go on to elaborate a little on what compelled him to lend his talent to the project. Sea of Stars is set to launch on PC and consoles sometime in 2022, so while the game already looks promising, there's still quite a wait in store for anyone excited to get their hands on it. Moving on to some MMO news, Final Fantasy XIV got a new content patch dubbed Save the Queen and serves a fine dish of features including new items, recipes, furnishings, as well as new extreme difficulty trail that sees a party of eight against a challenging battle. The main attraction is the Save the Queen Blades of Gun... I swear they're doing this on purpose. Okay, instead of taking an hour to get the name right, I'll just get to the point. Save the Queen Blades of something is a quest series penned by Yasumi Matsuno, whose work you may know from popular titles like Final Fantasy Tactics or Final Fantasy XII. The quest series will be updated through future patches and you'll also be able to do new resistance weapon quest battles. I currently don't play the game myself, but seeing these constant updates makes it really tempting to go and pick it up. 
Speaking of MMOs based on classic IPs, Fantasy Star Online 2 is now available for Xbox One in North America. The free-to-play online action role-playing game set in the Fantasy Star universe has been out in Japan for a few years now, so the North American launch offers a selection of content accumulated over the years of the game's existence. A PC version of Fantasy Star Online 2 is set to launch in May, exclusively through the Microsoft Store. Crossplay between the console and PC versions will be possible, which is a nice feature to have implemented in an MMO. There's a demo available for Brigandine Legend of Rune... I, I, it's like these games want me to get the names wrong. After 20 years, the tactical role-playing series is making a comeback on a Nintendo Switch, featuring six playable factions with 100 unique recruitable units between them. The game is currently set to release worldwide on June 25th, so if it looks like your cup of tea, you can now give it a test drive. Just be aware that the save data from the demo will apparently not transfer to the full version of the game. And finally, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition has spoilerific extra content. Now, before you scramble to turn off the video, don't worry, I won't be spoiling anything here. I'm just here to tell you that the content exists, but you'll have to find out what's in it on your own. The Future Connected epilogue takes place a year after the story wraps up, and if you're too impatient to play through the whole game again before getting a glimpse, it will apparently be available immediately for your viewing pleasure. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition releases for the Nintendo Switch on May 29th. That's it for April, make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and if you want to be alerted about more content from RPG Fan, then smash that subscription button and enable notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you with more news next month.